and fair and proportionate time across all four platforms was one I completely agree with. Um, if this is put down in the contract of future VP of Media and Marketing's, um, yeah, great. It's sort of a clear public declaration that, yeah, this is the right thing to do. But by removing the editor position from the elected officer, it will have sort of quite drastic and dramatic impacts on student media, Gary, and as I'll explain, sort of societies and sports teams um, in general. So, um, yeah, uh, for 33 years, the editor of Guy Reed has been a full-time position. So that's sort of not juggling it with a degree. Having spoken to um, most of the media team who agree with me, um, a student would not be able to be editor of Guy Reed. The sheer amount of time um, that is spent doing it, um, I'm going to be here until tomorrow afternoon without leaving, making sure this paper goes off tomorrow. Um, a student wouldn't be able to do that. Um, we're one of only two newspapers, student newspapers in the country that goes out weekly, um, 27 issues across the year. Um, and this is sort of something of pride, it's won us numerous awards um, and is highly respected by the university, many students, um, and it gives a massive platform for societies and sports teams to have what they do, the things that students do, um, aired so fantastically, 5,000 copies every single week. Um, so you, people hear about what you do. Um, by removing the editor's position, the, it's going to do one of two things. Either the quality of the paper is going to drop or the quantity is going to drop. It's going to go fortnightly, monthly, whatever, because a student physically can't do what a full-time person in this role does. Um, so if it goes, either of those happen, the advertising revenue is going to drop. Um, some of Adam's statistics, I'm afraid, were um, wildly wrong. I don't have them to hand, but um, yeah, I can find them later for you. But... Um, yeah, so if, if the quality drops or the quantity drops, then if it goes fortnightly, you automatically halve the amount of advertising that Guy Reed gets. Um, and last year, the full academic period which we had for advertising, um, it fully paid for um, the paper to be printed and subsidised the other sections for their equipment, for other things. Um, if this was to halve, then the student union would have to put more money in to just print in the paper, regardless of um, the rest. Um, and where's this money going to come from? Society, sports teams... Um, there'd be no glass roof in the union, uh, which would be devastating. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, so it will severely and dramatically reduce the ability of Gary to be the quality and regular publication it is. Um, and this, in turn, sort of financially at the very least, which is what Adam was arguing, will therefore have an impact on the other sections. I will take forward the initial motion, um, which... Although, like, whatever you vote now, that initial motion won't be the one that's passed here or not passed here. Um, but I'll take that motion because I completely agree with it. We came up with it together. Um, it's just this last minute amendment that's been put on. But yeah, I'll take that to um, Student Senate, um, sort of the next one, um, because I entirely agree with that. But this amendment is wrong, so please vote no. Thank you. Okay, thanks Tom. Um, would you like to um, make a reply, Adam? And this is a two minute reply. Um, well, I very much believe that the quality of a newspaper is based on its contributors um, and, and the work that the section editors do in compiling that. And, of course, the editor role is very important as well. But in terms of quality, that's very much based on contributors. And it's exactly in the same way that people contribute towards Cardiff Union Television, Express Radio, and Quench. The heads of those uh, media platforms also have a hell of a lot of stuff to do. They have to do it simultaneously with their studies and they don't get paid any money at all. And I, I just believe that this is fundamentally wrong. Um, I do have some figures uh, which I managed to get from the finance director of the Students' Union. And in terms of the funding for the year 2012-13, um, the amount of money that Advertising contracts generated for Guy Reith was £15,000, approximately. Um, but the amount given to Cardiff, uh, to Guy Reith, was £43,000. So that still left a £27,000 costing from the union. So far from covering the cost of the newspaper and subsidising the other media platforms, there is still a lot of money which is not wasted by any means, but there is still money that's not being recouped uh, from the advertising contracts that are in place. 
And I would also like to, um, for you to bear in mind that it's the principle uh, 30 seconds. Um, of this motion that needs to be discussed today. In terms of practicalities, that can go to the Board of Trustees. Um, today I very much want to highlight the principle of fairness and the potential for development of Cardiff student media. Okay, thanks Adam. Um, Tom, would you like to make a reply? Hello again. Just to, I, I to say, I don't have the exact figures, but um, Gary's advertising was 27,000, not the, and that 15,000 is from sort of unfinished um, figures and stuff. So it's um, them figures were wrong. Um, just to respond to the thing about fairness and equality and spending equal time, um, that's exactly what the initial motion um, proposed, and completely agree. I completely agree with that. Um, but this amendment, um, it was compared to sort of Ed, Adore, or um, Elliot being presidents of a society. Um, Guy Reed isn't a society with sort of one, or car student media, or it's not one sort of um, interest thing. It's not just making a newspaper, it's providing a platform for all other societies. So therefore, sort of facilitating that, so, sorry, societies and sports teams, so facilitating that is sort of a massive part of the remit rather than, than just sort of organising a newspaper. Um, in terms of, yeah, just the sort of sheer damage that this would do down the line to um, sort of student media as a whole, the role itself, if you, would, if you had a student, although it, obviously the impacts on the Gari uh, would change seconds. if the student was editing it, um, what the role would be basically exactly the same, just with less work, which would mean it's sort of probably less valuable and useful. Um, so yeah, so please vote no. Cheers. Okay, thanks Tom. Um, does anybody have any questions for Adam first, please? Yeah. So, uh, can we have that person there, please? Thanks. Henry Goldsack. If the. Oh, uh, can you state your name, please? Henry Goldsack. Oh, okay. If the editor of. Um, Garin to spending half the week editing Garin. How is a student going to have that much time and do his studies? Um, well, um, the role of editor of Guy Reed, they are the days that he puts aside. Whether he spends a full day editing the paper or otherwise is up to him. Um, it's important to clarify that section editors are in the office on Wednesdays and Thursdays committing a lot of time uh, themselves. Uh, Tom's uh, role as editor is easily, um, it is in terms of structuring and gathering stories to put into the paper, something that could be done uh, in an afternoon. I think that, I, well, I, the reason why I say this is because De Montfort University, which, has, which is one of the few uh, universities that has a VP Media and Communications, has won NUS Best Student Award in the UK, Best Student Media in the UK uh, Award, um, and they are not editor of their newspaper because they are a strategist in putting forward all of student media as a collective and making it the best that it can be. And I think if, if, you know, if it's uh, a job that's too much for one person, then there is a sub-editor position, or introduce a co-editor. I think it's very important that the student can uh, uh, fulfill the role as editor of the paper. Okay, thanks. Um, any, any more questions? Sorry, I just wanted to uh, clarify. Yeah, can you um, be concise as Yes, well, sorry. Please, uh, far from me saying that Tom's role was insignificant, Tom does a lot of other work um, which is part of his VP... Are you, are you answering yeah, the original which question? which is part of the VP Media and Marketing title, such as distributing papers, um, which is not really the editor of a remit, um, the remit of an editor. And that's why VP Media and Marketing, if he had a student editing, he would be then able to concentrate on those practical aspects. Okay, thank you. Um, you've had your hand up for a while, so... Harry Newman. In my experience, oh, hello. 
having uh, the university terrified of the newspaper is really useful. And you wouldn't have that if the editor didn't sit in all those university committees and didn't have the right to sit on the board of the Students' Union. Do you agree? They will, they will, they will have their rights as VP Media and Marketing without the editor title. So they would still be able to pass on um, and make the university fear, if that is your point. How do you know that? Okay. Um, Two um, years here, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, we'll have one final question, um, and we will go to the gentleman in the middle there. Um, Tom Bryan, I'm slightly confused. So you're saying that the VP of media and marketing shouldn't yeah. be the editor, yes. but they must kind of have an overall control of Guy Reeve through that position. Mm -hmm. Does that not kind of make them the de facto editor? No, because they also have a remit to uh, oversee uh, Cardiff Union Television, Express Radio, and Quench. And so it's very much like Tom's position currently is both overseer of all media platforms, but also equal to the heads. And this creates a very mismatched view. If he was just an overseer of the media platforms, he would be able to develop them all uh, as a holistic approach. Does that answer your question? So you're saying he would have no direct control as to the direction of any of the media? No, he would. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that's the role of the v, well, what I believe should be the role of VP Media and Marketing, in that he should be able to liaise with the student heads um, in order to uh, focus more on the marketing aspects of his title um, and have a, a focused, uh, forward-thinking student media. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, a procedural motion has been submitted, and it's a point of information, uh, and that's Carrie Davis. Uh, yeah, can we have a microphone, please? Hi, sorry. So this isn't uh, a point on either side. I just think in the spirit of democracy and transparency, you should be given the correct figures, as none of the figures you've currently been given are correct. Um, so... Finance director problems there, then. <laughs> um, from 2011 to 2012, which was two years ago, uh, Guy Reed advertising was, in fact, £27,000. But last year, Guy Reed advertising was £17,000. The cost of student media in 2011 to 2000... Hang on. Yes, so the cost of student media two years ago was £59,000, and the cost of student media last year was £44,000. They're the figures. That's just a point of clarification. Thanks. Okay, um, any, f uh, any questions for um, Adam? Any questions? Um, yeah, can we go to that um, gentleman there, please? Uh, over there, uh, next to the information desk uh, with, the, with the hoodie. Hi, uh, Greg Landon. If you, uh, if you take away the editor position from media, do you not feel that um, basically the union will be discouraged from keeping the VP media and marketing as a SAB position because they'd effectively be paying however much they earn uh, for somebody to oversee things, which the union could in theory do itself? Because um, if you're saying that the, the VP no longer the editor Shit. Oh. <laughs> um, but if, if they're not going to have direct control over those sections, then they're effectively just managing, they're just overseeing things. And why would the union uh, continue to keep that position and pay them that money? And if that position goes away, do you not feel that the standard of Guy Reed and media in general will decline? Uh, no, I don't think that. Um, and the, the example that I put forward was De Montfort University, where you have the VP Media and Communications as a strategist position, um, and they won the award uh, for Best Student Media in the UK for this year. And I believe that, f I think it's a crucial role, 
because I think that it's very much important to harness the talents of people dedicated and involved with Cardiff student media and in having an independent, impartial view over the different media platforms, um, they would be able to make that happen and focus on the marketing strategy because marketing is a substantial part of the title which I think is often overlooked and it's very important to have such strategies in place in order to further Cardiff student media collectively. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Adam. Um, uh, I'd like to invite Tom um, up to the stage, please. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, yes. Um, the girl with the black dress um, there, please. Yeah, the, the good, yeah. Hi, uh, um, you said you don't think um, uh, a normal student would be able to dedicate half... Oh, sorry, Caitlin Forbes. Um, you said you don't think a normal student would be able to devote as much time as the normal editor of Gary's SAB officer does sorry, it. any student. Yes. I didn't mean to sort of... Yeah, yeah. no, it's fine. Um, yeah, I, as a member of a committee of a very large society can easily spend more than half my week working for that society. So do you not think you're underestimating students being able to do the job and taking a position away from them? Um, I would sort of reference, um, because obviously we're talking about all the heads of each platform of student media sort of already spend ridiculous amounts of time. Uh, Hannah Cook, who I think is listening on Express Radio and tweeting in now, uh, she was station manager of Express last year, which came third in the country. Um, but she, to fulfill that role... She wasn't paid. No, she wasn't paid, but she had to take a year out of her degree to do that role. She, had, she, she that went on a sabbatical choice, year. It was, it was her choice, <laughs> but purely because the role demands so much time. Like, and that's... And Gary, there's a, a weekly newspaper of sort of 32, 36, 42 pages. Sorry, 40 pages. Um, every, every single week. And sort of the, yeah, as I say, I'm going to be here. I'm not leaving here tonight. I'm staying here until the paper's sent off, probably 2, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. Because I, yeah, because it needs to be done. And, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, can we have the person uh, on the left there, please? And then we'll go um, to Ollie, and then we'll go to the person at the back. Hello, Tom. Uh, Nathan Cavro. I'm just wondering, if you are spending half your week on Guy Reeve, how are you going to spend an equal amount of time on the other three um, student media? Um, I'm, yeah, fair, fair point, but I'm not currently spending, I haven't clocked it up, but I'm not spending half my week um, on the Guy Reeve. I spend two days, I'm usually here six days a week. I spend th all day Thursday and Friday till two, three o'clock sending the paper off. Um, doing that, I spend. We also have spend a lot of time doing um, union stuff as well. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know the exact proportions, but I think the initial motion to spend fair and proportionate and equal time across all four would be the right way to go about it, rather than removing the editor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, to Ollie. It's um, two questions that kind of make one. So, do you not think that there is a severe conflict of interest having the editor of the newspaper also sitting on the board of trustees of the Students' Union? And in that vein, since you said that Guy Reeve is a good platform for sports teams and societies, do you think it was a good platform for the football club and for FAD last week when you printed a story about them that's now in national press smearing them? Um. Okay, so it's, can you, well, the first bit of your question was regarding, sorry, repeat, shout, shout out. Me. First bit was conflict of interest yeah. on Board of Trustees, second bit was smearing your own students. <laughs> um, yeah, the first bit, the conflict of interest, um, I'm trying to not swear now, um, it's always been described by sort of senior management team as rather be in the tent pissing out than outside the tent pissing in. Um, I think that sort of, it's, it's not... It's a, it's a full, it's, it was a full-time role yeah. 33 years ago, so the whole, jo whole job of a whole person, um, yeah, th sort of for the last 33 years. So sort of the time, is sort of rather than the trustee bit, is the bit that I'm arguing for. Um, the, the bit about sitting on the board of trustees is for the whole position rather than that would be the same whether I was editor or whether I wasn't editor. Um, 
Yeah, and the, and the second bit, um, the football story, um, which many of you may have seen, um, was reported completely factually, completely um, unbiasedly, no, no opinion in that whatsoever. It quoted a few people who had opinions on the thing. I got a statement from FAD. I've got no, no queries with that story at all. Um, yes, and to the person at the back, please. Hi, uh, Trisha here. Um, you know, Quench, uh, CUTV and Express all have heads who are students themselves. With Guy Reid having an editor, you know, with the VP marketing, uh, media marketing role combined, don't you think it's a bias in itself? Um, that can always be down to the individual who gets elected themselves. That comes down to election week, campaigning, and people voting on the person that they think will have the best interests on whatever their, the person voting's preference is. Um, that's, not, that's not got anything to do with the role itself, the remit. Um, obviously, as editor of Gary and sort of overseeing the other sections as it currently stands, um, it's, it's just sort of the role is basically to make all of them... Um, yeah, just as good, it, like, there's no, never got any question of the, the role itself not, not favouring one over the other. It's always just, the, we want the best student media. Um, a few years back, in, you walked, sort of three years ago, in uh, my first and second year, um, you walked into the Gary office, as it was then, with CTV in the corner, when it was on the fourth floor. Um, Quench editors didn't know the Guy Reed editors, and likewise with the other the CTV Express. There was no real cohesion between the four platforms. And we've seen, if any of you saw Varsity coverage, if any of you are watching it on Express on CTV now, um, at home, like, student media is best when it's working together, and that's what the VP Media Marketing role does. The bit the editor thing doesn't have any real impact upon that and furthermore the, the motion, the initial motion would be to set that in stone and be something I'd pass on to my successor because this isn't going to affect, affect me personally, it's just sort of ensuring future generations of me uh, as in successors <laughs> not going to start reproducing on stage um, yeah so um, so yeah that's just sort of ensuring a sort of decent legacy if that word isn't too grandiose um, yeah, so it's just ensuring that, and I think the initial motion which I'm going to be taking forward regardless um, to Student Senate next about fair, proportionate, equal time um, and being trained, which I think is another vital thing, being trained on all four platforms so to, to a competent level so you can step in uh, is crucial and sort of will be passed on from me to my successor. Um, but if that's in writing, in, in your contract and in the role, then that's fine. But stripping the editor position from this role um, won't benefit that. Okay. Thank you. Um, can I just uh, remind that all um, people that are speaking to keep um, things quite concise. Um, we'll go to um, you at the front and um, then you over there. And yeah. We heard conflict of interest a minute ago. Do you think that those proposing this amendment are conflicted in that they fancy a nice cushy job which doesn't have to write the paper, and they happen to be from a section that's not the guy read. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, like, as Adam said, this is nothing personal. It's about the role, so I'm not going to answer that question, but thank you. Okay, and um, to Lisa, please. Uh, yeah, following on from what Caitlin said, oh sorry, my name is Lisa Childs. Um, you said that the head of Express Media had to take a year out. I believe that she actually took a year out because she was on placement. And then following from that, with the guy Reith, um, it's students that write the articles, students edit the sections voluntarily, and then you put the paper together. So what makes you think that the editor of the paper as a whole should justify a £20,000 annual salary? Um, it's with regards to the first point about Hannah um, taking a year out. She was doing English. She does English literature, which doesn't have a placement year. Um, she took a year off because she didn't think she'd be able to do both, and also to sort of get some paid work experience to fund her through that year. Um, so it wasn't the placement year; it was sort of a choice. And the year before that, the um, head control of that's uh, station manager Express um, had to take extended leave because of stress. Um, so it sort of does the, the heads of things do take their toll, and I'm not undermining that at all. I'm not saying. Nevertheless, that, they're still they're still volunteering. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and they do a fantastic job. And it's like, yeah, I'm not. This isn't uh, Guy Reed versus CTV versus Express versus Quench. There's people from all across all four platforms who are here tonight who 
ag agree that sort of the diary editor should be full time, and if anything, that the other four should be full time as well. The other three should be full time as well. This isn't about going backwards; it's about sort of taking all four platforms forward. Um, and in regards to your, sorry, what's your final point? In, your in a similar vein, you're saying now that all of the positions could be full time, which yeah. I'm sure is a great point. But then wouldn't that be quite an expensive suggestion? And surely as VP Media Marketing, in charge of the whole of student media, it's your role to take on all four platforms and combine it into one? And this role is. It's, it's never not been. This role isn't editor of Guy Reed. It is. Of, sorry? Editor of Guy Reed is your role. No, it's VP Media Marketing, which means I'm the editor. Sure. Sort of by, by association, yeah. Because you are because the editor of, sort of, of the guy reading. Because of the, effectively, with a newspaper that's published, yeah. sort of, okay. such, sorry, yeah. um, like the buck stops with the editor, and when that's the elected officer as well, then that sort of mm -hmm. there's no conflict between editorial direction of the paper and yeah. sort of the influence of the person in charge of it all. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you in the middle there, Grace? Hi, um, Grace Cole. Okay. Sorry, where are I? Oh, hi. Um, the whole role is VP media and marketing. If you're spending, like, say, two, three days a week editing a paper, how are you then distributing your time evenly over all the other branches of student media as well as the marketing part of the role? Okay. Um, it, it comes down to a lot of it is to what happened, needs to happen that week. Like, this week is AGM, so I've been doing things predominantly for CTV, organising meetings to get the things set up, the camera over there set up, the camera's up there. Um, but that's, a lot of it is the head of CTV doing that. It's, I'm not sort of saying I do the majority. But, um, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, um, it's not necessarily about allocating two and a half days a week for each section or whatever it may be. Um, it's, yeah, it's when the need comes to be fair and proportionate with the sort of time spent and yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, we, we will, we've had a good amount of questions for and against, so we'll now move to um, one-minute summaries. So if we can have um, Adam. Yeah. Oh, well. Applause for CUTV and Express. Anyway, um, basically, I just want to... Uh, recapitulate that it is nothing against Tom's position now. I think Tom is a very good candidate for the role and has proved himself very effective in liaising with different heads. But I can't guarantee that that will happen in the future. And I want to make sure that Cardiff Student Media develops as a, as a cohesive platform. And it, the, the previous motion didn't have anything to mandate uh, VP Media and Marketing to spend equal and proportionate time on it. And there is the problem that if they are editor of Guy Reith at the same time, there is conflict in terms of how much time they spend on each media platform. So by having it independent and having it as a strategist, which I believe any head um, should be, um, I believe that with this motion put forward, Ten uh, we'll have a much stronger uh, student media with advertising contracts negotiated throughout. Thank you, Adam. Um, Tom? Um, as a sort of cropped up uh, throughout this debate, um, the role, if it was just to oversee, to market, whatever it would be, would be a really confusing and bizarre role for an elected officer to have, sort of stepping on the toes of people. But the, the crucial thing, from my point, is that the time and effort and sort of it, representation provided by the elected officer also being head of student media, sorry, elected officer being um, editor of Guy Reeve. Um, if that was taken away, the paper would suffer, the media would suffer as a whole. Um, it was sort of, yeah, by, by changing that, it would just leave student media down the line. Obviously, it's not, it's not a personal thing. It's not going to affect me, but to leave, a, so that's why I'm fighting it. I completely agree with the original motion, but I'm fighting it because I don't want to see kind of student media suffer or get worse. I want it to get better. Um, so please, please vote against this. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, we will now go to a vote. So um, can I have those um, four raise their hands, please, clearly? And those against? And those abstaining? Um, 
the motion falls. Um, so we've, we've had six motions. We've got three um, to go, and then we've just got a quick notice of elections. So we're doing, um, we're doing well. Um, so can I ask, um, can I ask uh, Ollie to come up, please, to speak for um, the student voice? And can I remind everybody to stay in the room um, because obviously if we fall below this minimum number, then... Yeah, um, Ollie, yeah, four minutes. Thank you. Hello, sorry, me again, um, but I promise this one is not that controversial. Um, so it's about the student voice and the student academic rep system that we have here, which as most of you will know falls within my role as VP Education. So the student academic rep system has grown fairly rapidly in recent years, and we currently have around 950 academic reps throughout the university. And the student voice at present is jointly owned and run by the students' union and the university. The student voice, um, according to HEFCU, that is the Higher Education Funding Council for Wales, um, should be run independent of, student, of uh, universities. They say that student unions should be empowered to provide effective student academic representation. They also say the students' unions should be the, quote, recognised representative channel between students and the institution. But the student academic rep system lacks sufficient union oversight to fit and function in coordination with the union's educational goals because it is currently run in partnership with the institution. Therefore, in line with the fundamental principles of, in of representation and HEFCU guidelines, I believe and propose that the student voice should be independent of the university. And I also believe that now is an opportune time to do that, given that the university is going through institutional review. And in doing this, the student union will reassert its commitment to student representation. Thus, I resolve that the union takes ownership of the student voice by taking on administrative responsibility of the student academic rep system from the university and that the union supports this transition by adequately resourcing the student voice, including, but not limited to, providing adequate and appropriate staff support. Thank you, Ollie. Um, would anybody like to speak against the motion? No. Um, so we'll move to questions. For Ollie, so if Ollie, if you could come back up, please. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, any extra comments? If not, we'll go to a vote. I said it wasn't controversial. Uh, oh, yeah. So we've got a hand up at the back. Edward Kingston. I, um, I sit on the staff student panel as part of my role as president of the course-based society. And I'm, I'm wondering what your changes are going to have. Are they going to have effect on what I do? Is it, what we do within engineering is we have these staff student panels that are elected and the students talk directly to the lecturers. And I, I see that as quite an effective system. I, I've given feedback yeah. and it's taken by the head of the department straight away. In terms of the student voice, I'm not understanding what you're trying to okay. say with reference to what I do. Um, so, there are sort of two um, points behind this, and one is a political point, um, the fact that the university cannot, as it currently does, purport to represent students um, to itself. The only body that can really adequately um, bring students together and accu accurately represent student voice is a student's union. Um, and there's a political reason why students' unions should do that and not the university. Um, for the same reason why the police and the Crown Prosecution Service don't both prosecute a criminal and defend them. Um, and in terms of what effect it actually has um, to you as a student academic rep on the ground, within your school, very little because engineering, I know, is a school of very good practice. But there are schools out there that have very poor practices, schools that don't run elections, that just go up into a lecture theatre and say, who wants to be an academic rep? And the first three people to be quick enough to put their hands up get it. Um, schools that we've said to them, 
will you please allow the president of your course-based society to sit on your panel because they talk to students a lot more than you talk to students and they outright say no. They say course-based societies just get drunk and organise socials and shouldn't be involved in academic representation. This is because the academic rep system is currently run by the university and the union. And so if schools start to say no, we can't say, no, you should be doing this because we run it and we, we um, create the rules. Um, when we do have that power and that authority, then it makes the election of my role more meaningful because I can then say the academic rep system is going to run like this as, an, as a person elected by students, not some academic um, who isn't elected um, saying this is the way we're going to run it. So for your school, very little difference probably, um, but for a lot of other schools actually it will lead to vast improvements in their system so it runs more similarly to the way that yours does. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, if there are no more questions, we'll go to a vote. Any questions? Um, okay, we'll go. Any? Uh, we'll go to a vote. Yeah. Um, so, can I have um, hands in the air? Those for the motion, and those against, and those abstaining. So the motion passes. Um, so the next motion, um, Muslim students to be better represented, uh, represented by the Students' Union. Um, if Taslima could come up, please. Hi, guys. Um, the motion that I have for you today is for Muslim students to be better represented by the Student Union. I have spoken to members of the Islamic society and have also received feedback from Muslim students and they have raised the following concerns. There's a lack of halal food options served at the SU. Um, there's currently no women only gym session available. We have undertaken a petition which has over 50 plus signatures in favour of this. Um, students have raised concerns to have better ablution facilities and a greater variety of non-alcoholic events. An estimated 4 to 5% of Cardiff University students are made up of the Muslim population, which is why I stress the importance that these concerns are not only recognized, but supported and addressed effectively, and why I would like your support today, as they will have a significant impact on a lot of Cardiff University students. Um, the motions I would like to put forward are on the agenda. They are that the SU should lobby the university for at least one women-only gym session a week. There should be better praying facilities in the SU for students, a greater variety of non-alcoholic social events, and that the SU should also be lobbying the university to improve its provision for, women stu uh, for Muslim students too. Um, I strongly believe that the enforcement of these provisions will encourage social inclusion amongst Cardiff students and cause Muslim students to feel less isolated. And it also puts the SU one step closer in representing diversity, an ethos which Cardiff Uni feels very strongly about. So again, please vote for my motion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kaz. Um, would anybody wish to speak uh, against? So, um, Barney, with... The black. Uh, would you like to come to the stage? Uh, I don't think that's needed. Um, uh, okay. People can see me. Four minutes. Uh, okay, so before I begin, I'll... I completely agree with. Um, I think that this is a genuine issue. And yeah, no, by all means. There's one thing which I think needs to be challenged on an ethical ground. Um, halal as a method of, of slaughtering animals is not uncontroversial. Um, and please do correct me if I'm wrong on any technical issue here. But in traditional slaughter, uh, the animal is stunned prior to being killed. They are given something which either numbs them or incapacitates them or makes them unable to comprehend what is about to happen to them. Um, it is my understanding, and please, obviously, if I'm wrong, do correct me, that with halal, a, no such stun is performed. And a single incision into the carotid artery is made, allowing the beast to, ble to bleed to death, essentially. Um, now, this has meant people around the world who care for the welfare of animals, and you know, I could count myself among them, a little concerned that this is causing unnecessary suffering. And I, I think it should be raised in this room that we need to ask ourselves the question, if this is indeed 
what halal causes, do we want to be promoting a method of slaughter which actively harms animals? It, obviously, if I'm wrong, please do correct me. But this is a genuine concern I have because I like animals. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, if this turns out to be irrelevant to the discussion, then that's fine, but I thought someone should raise it. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Taz, do you, um, do you want to reply? Um, you have two minutes if you want to reply. Um, I would just like to say that halal meat is the most humane way you could um, kill animals. Um, it's like um, we, the whole point of halal food is to put the animal through as least pain as possible. That's, um, yeah, so it's a humane way of killing animals. Yeah. So. Okay, and um, Barney, um, do you wish to reply? Uh, yeah, can you use the microphone, please? Um, okay, uh, I, 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 I like that we're on the same wavelength here. We both don't want animals to suffer. But, I mean, do you know if these animals are stunned prior to death? Because, I mean, I can it's... imagine if you're bleeding to death, it's a very unpleasant death unless you've been knocked out or stunned. I, I don't know the specifics, but if you can advise, I'd be very um, it's, you're, you know, you're making a reply, so it's yeah, not so, a question. Well, it's a reply. this is a, a, a request for clarification. Um, uh, uh, I need to know this information, and if anyone has it, please volunteer. But um, if, without an answer to this question about whether or not these animals are stunned and therefore killed in a way which does not cause pain, I still feel my issue is standing. Yeah. Um, thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, gentleman there. Um, in the front, please. Hello, Harold Baker. Um, I was just wondering about the, uh, the prayer facilities in the SU. Um, I thought we had a sort of a prayer room on the third floor. Is that not my being silly? Or... Yeah, um, the issue that was raised in the feedback was not the prayer facilities, but um, the ablution, so the area to wash your hands and to get prepared to pray is currently the toilets, and they feel that that's on a lower floor than the prayer room, so you have to go downstairs to the toilets and then go upstairs, and that was seen as not pleasant, and um, they would like a separate facility, just like a sink or something next to the prayer room, so they can just do that and something a bit more hygienic. So that's what they asked from, from the feedback given. Okay. Um, and the person in the back with the blue uh, jumper, please. Yeah, Ian McLaren. Um, does this not now come under the, the Black and Ethnic Minorities Officers' role that was passed the motion for? Uh, it's not relevant. Um, that question is not relevant. How is that not relevant? I'm sorry. Uh, because this is about the motion. Um, so, if it doesn't matter if the Black and Ethnic Minority, um, d uh, right. Um, so can we have another question, please? Um, okay. um, so, I'm going to use Yeah, so um, can we have the gentleman there, please? Um, Isaac Spencer, just on the issue of halal, I'm thinking in the actual motion we've got, we note there's a lack of provision. We don't actually state that we believe or resolve anything about it. So couldn't you have both any stance on halal meat and still vote for the motion? Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't understand that, sorry. Um, yes. I mean, on. Okay. Um, um, the girl, um, the one, yeah. Please. Hi, sorry, Sophie Mullins. Um, I know it's about halal meat, but Sikhs can't eat halal meat. I feel this should possibly be thought about in a conversation about provision for different religions within the union. Yeah. Or at least I think Sikhs can't. Um, oh, my so, yeah, um, this motion is it, it, yeah, um, quiet, please. Um, do you want to make a re reply, Taz? Um, or is that, so, is that are you, you asking that we have sort of a different type of meat for Sikhs? Is that what you're suggesting? Or? It just has to not be halal or killed in a ceremonial manner. Um, 
The thing with halal options is on, on like, as an, so it would be like normal meat that you have now and a halal option. So if they feel that way, they can just get the normal meat that you serve already. It's just on top of that, in addition to, so it's not going to be all meat to be halal. It's just to have that alternative available. Um, and uh, any questions? Um, um, the girl in the, the middle, in the middle there. Hi, I'm Fran. Um, I was just wondering about the women-only gym sessions. Yeah. You say that you've got 50 signatures. Um, wh what, how would you go around doing that? Would it be like all the gyms or just one specific gym for a day or set hours? Um, the petition was for, to have a gym session for like say an hour, I think it was on a Wednesday evening just to have that hour slot for a women-only session. And, um, yeah, that's the feedback that was given from Muslim students. But when, when, if you have a gym session, it's just for Muslim or just, just for women-only? It could be for women. It's not just Muslim women. But it's just having only. a women-only gym session, that's yeah. excluding... You say you want to be like, bring us all together and integrate it more. Surely that's yes. excluding. But that's just one hour of a week. So you have the rest of the week to have women and men to integrate. That, that's for religious reasons so, because right now one of the concerns is that Muslim students feel isolated from this um, SU because they feel like their religious beliefs are not sort of taken into account so you have the whole rest of the week to have male and female students to integrate and go to gym whenever for just one hour a week for just a women only session okay, so. okay thank you and uh, the gentleman in the back please Hi, Matt Jenkins. Um, I've got three questions. I apologise for wasting everyone's time. Um, the first point would be uh, the separate prayer rooms for male and um, females. Can you keep it brief, yeah? I'll, I'll try. Okay. Um, it's, it's, under, <laughs> it's under point three. Um, it's, it says that you want separate prayer rooms for males and females, and it makes no provision for, I don't know, those who uh, are non-binary gender, for example. It makes no provision for those who... Uh, those who don't think that it should be a case of division between gender when it comes to something sacred. And I don't think that, that's, that, pro, uh, that supporting that idea is something that the union should be doing. Uh, the I'm second trying issue, to keep um, re relevancy in, yeah, in your the, speech. The second issue would be that it, uh, the claim that having alcoholic socials prevents social inclusion. Um, I spent six months at uni not drinking. I could go along to a pub. I mean... It's, it's not a massive uh, strain on a student to go to a drinking social if they don't drink. It's, it's, if it's an act of willpower and an act of religious uh, affirmation, then I don't think that's a problem for the individual. Um, it, and also, there's the thing, some, some suggestions have been winter wonderland, bowling nights, theme parks, meals, etc. Are you suggesting that the union should buy these, like a, a winter wonderland ice, ice rink? I don't think that that's, I think that's a res, uh, problem for ISOC to solve out, not the union. Uh, and the, the, the third point would be about halal meat. It takes about a camel, uh, which is sacrificed on Eid, usually takes about five minutes to bleed to death. I mean, like, that's not, that's not humane in the remotest uh, interpretation of the word. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, I got to remember everything you said. But um, the first thing you said was about um, people, you think that people wouldn't mind going to pubs. No, so people can still go to non-alcoholic events. But from the feedback I've been given, Muslim, specifically girls, have said that they do not, um, so there was like, you know when you first start uni, you have, um, what are they called, friend, befriend, I don't know, there were some events that were non-alcoholic, but they were held at a pub, and they said that they could not go to those fresher events because they were held at a pub, and they did feel uncomfortable, and they have given me feedback saying that they feel isolated, because people are not recognised, people have this assumption that just because you don't drink, you can still, if there's non-alcoholic events, they should still be able to go to that. But the fact that it's held in a pub is what's um, causing them to feel like they can't um, contribute. So I think it's very um, ignorant to say, oh, well, I don't drink and I go to these events. Yeah, that's probably fine for you, but there are people who have come to me and said that they're not comfortable with this. And if you can move it from... And it's something as simple as move going away from the TAF and going to CF10, a small change like that, which would increase so much social inclusion. Because if you look at so many, um, so, what do you call it, events, um, 
if you look at how much Muslim students do attend them, it's very low. And I think if you just make small changes like that, it would make such a huge difference. I'm a Muslim student myself, and the whole reason I even started this motion was because I myself didn't feel comfortable because there were so many... Um, because I didn't feel like I could um, go to all these events. And that prevented me, when it was Freshers' Week, I felt like I couldn't get involved as much as I would have wanted to. So I think it's important to recognize that some people do feel comfortable, but don't, don't feel comfortable with um, not having non-alcoholic events. Okay, thank you. Um, can we have a final question um, from the person at the back, please? You're right, Mark Roberts. You were saying about the socials being non-alcoholic. I mean, I've been part of the Rifle Club for four years. We, as a matter of principle, have always held non-alcoholic socials. In fact, the, uh, about two weeks ago, whenever it came out, we were all chatting in our range about how we all wanted to see Thor 2 and arranged a trip to go see it. Plenty of Asian, and I think we've got a couple of Muslim students said they were interested, and not one turned up. We've done it many years running, and like I said, four years. They don't make the effort. We put the effort in, and very few of them actually make the effort to be included in the group. Uh, what's the question? Can I'm you just clarify saying, the question? It's, it's more of a, why do you think, why, why is that? When um, we put so much effort in, why do you not try and give back a little bit as well? Um, okay, can I answer that? Uh, okay. It's up to you, um, it's up to you. A lot of it has to do with attitudes, and like, um, when I speak to Muslim students, and I say, why don't you get involved in um, the, um, like, the student union they say well the student doesn't um like cater for me it doesn't represent me there is a stigma attached that muslim students generally feel that the student union doesn't represent them and they feel like they don't belong to the student union and even when i say to student union, how many student um, muslim students um apply for student senate or like get involved actively get involved with the student union and it's a very low amount because they just feel like what's the point they don't represent me what is the point point? and i'm here today to make that change so, so that i'm not saying I'm not saying that these provisions, as soon as you put them in, we're going to have so many Muslim people start um, engaging stuff. But if we don't start now, we're not going to make that change. No, that's fair enough. Thank you very much. I'm sorry if I came okay. across a bit ignorant. It wasn't Thank the intention. Thank you. Um, Taz, would you like to make a summary? Um, no. It's up to you. No, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah. We'll now go to a vote then. Um, if I can have um, hands in the air for those for the motion. Thank you. And those against, and those abstaining, the motion passes. Okay, um, it gives me as much pleasure as I'm sure it does you to know we're on the final item of this evening. Um, I won't take up too much of your time. Um, I just want to let you know uh, that the elections uh, for all the full-time and part-time officer positions, including our new uh, B, uh, by not black and ethnic and minorities, I don't know the wording which way around we chose, but um, officer is also going to be up for that as well. Um, one of, the, one of the projects that we're doing this year um, is called Diversifying the Movement. Um, and it's all about kind of getting away from the typical, uh, the typical people that tend to stand for these roles. It's great that they do, and I absolutely would never want to discourage anybody from standing. But it's about encouraging those people who perhaps feel there are barriers to them standing uh, from doing so. Um, one particular example, uh, currently our Student Senate has 21 seats on it. Only six of those seats are held by women. 60% um, of Cardiff students are women. Um, that's pretty unrepresentative, if you ask me. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of work over the course of the year. Um, and if you, are, uh, if you do feel that there's any barriers to you participating in our democratic structures or running in our elections, I'd really love to hear them. Whoever you are, whatever demographic you're from, um, I want to know about it so we can change it and make our elections open to everybody. Um, finally, can you all stand up? Really quick. Um, so the, the point of this exercise is that the people left when kind of I finished my list uh, standing are the sort of people that should nominate themselves for elections. Um, so if, you, if this isn't true, then you need to sit down. Um, 
I'm a Cardiff University student. So sit down if that's not true. Um, I haven't already been an elected officer for two years. Harry Newman, sit down. <laughs> um, and that's it. So nominate yourselves. I was a bit cheesy, but that's my point. You're all here. You all have an interest in the Students' Union in some way or another. So there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be an officer. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you, everybody. Um, if you could just put your paper ballots um, you know, in the boxes um, as you leave. And just thank you to everybody that got involved in the debate and attending this evening. Thank you very much. Um, the meeting is officially closed. And that concludes CUTV's coverage of... Oh!